Today we're going to talk about shoulder drop which is quite literally when one shoulder appears to be lower than the other shoulder. This is pretty common for those of you that have had a stroke or a brain injury, and there's a variety of reasons why this happens. So in this video, we're gonna go over what some of those reasons are. If you are someone, when you look in the mirror, it looks like one of your shoulders is lower than the other. Some considerations or things that you should be mindful of when you're doing any of your neuro rehab exercises as far as position positioning, and of course, exercises to help you restore shoulder symmetry and overall posture, which will result with better walking, hopefully, maybe, prevent soreness or discomfort when you're sitting for prolonged period, periods of time, and of course, and probably most importantly, set you up for success as you work on your arm rehabilitation exercises. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and live an overall more mobile, happier, healthier, more fulfilled life. And all that said, Let's dive right into shoulder drop, starting with what are some reasons why you might have the appearance that one shoulder is lower than the other. First and foremost, and probably the most obvious, is just weakness. Because you have weakness on one side of your body, the muscles that kind of support the shoulder blade, which is the big flat bone on the back side of the shoulder, are weak, and they cannot sustain the force of the weight of the arm, which attaches to the shoulder blade, pulling it down. So that would give the appearance that that shoulder is lower. The next reason why you might have the appearance that that shoulder is lower is, of course, either spasticity or tightness, and in most cases, a combination of both. So in many cases, after you've had damage to your brain and that has resulted in upper extremity weakness, the muscles that become tight, and I've talked about this recently in that masterclass that I did on the shoulder, and I will put a link for that video in the description below. But in many cases, the muscles that pull that shoulder forward or that scapula forward, what we call protraction, the muscles that downward rotate that scapula or tip it downwards, and the muscles that internally rotate the arm, a lot of times are a combination or present with a combination of tightness and spasticity. Spasticity is just an involuntary muscle contraction that is a result of damage to your brain or your spinal cord. And when that happens, it, because of a combination of that shoulder blade being protracted and downward rotated, it gives the appearance that that shoulder is lower. And then the next reason why you might have the appearance that that shoulder is lower are for those of you that have a pretty significant neglect or inattention to one side. And what tends to happen is you will slightly shift towards your stronger side and maybe even rotate a little bit. And that combination of shifting and rotating will give the appearance that that shoulder is lower. The reason I bring that up is because when we get to the rationale behind the exercises, I'm gonna give you things that you should check to make sure, to figure out which one or combination of these events are contributing to what looks like your shoulder is lower. But neglect is definitely one of them. If you sit a lot, you will have a tendency to want to support yourself on your stronger arm, which as you can see, as I'm even just doing that, you can see that it gives that appearance or you stay slightly rotated that way, which will also give that appearance that that shoulder is lower if it's combined with that shifting. So before we get into 
the actual exercises that we're going to go into, I did tell you that I wanted to mention some of the considerations that you should be mindful of if you are someone that has where there, it appears that one shoulder is lower than the other. First, you really do want to identify, is this a postural thing? Is this a neglect issue? What is the root cause? And only you are going to know that. But you do want to identify that to make sure that you are correcting that issue before you do the exercises. So if it's a neglect issue, you want to make sure that in addition to the exercises that you are addressing the neglect so that every time you're done with the exercise, you're just not going back to that same position. So that's one thing to be mindful of. The other thing to be mindful of is that there is a belief that spasticity increases or that involuntary muscle contraction that we see in a lot of people after a stroke or a brain injury. One potential reason that that happens is that the body is looking for stability. So if there's a lot of weakness on that side in the days and the weeks after the stroke, your body will just kind of tighten up in any remaining muscles it has left to give you your body or your brain a sense of stability. So the reason I bring that up is having the arm supported might decrease spasticity a little bit and correct some of this if your shoulder is dropped because of spasticity. So something to be aware of when you're doing your exercises or you're just sitting on the couch watching TV. Um, I see this a lot where people just kind of let that arm hang in the lap or for some of you that don't even know where your arm is, sometimes it's just kind of off in space doing its own thing while you're having a conversation. It's always good if whenever possible that you can support that arm, whether you're sitting in your wheelchair, if you're sitting in just a regular chair, try and find a chair that has armrests on it or put your arms up on the table if there's a table in front of you. Things like that to support that arm as much as possible to decrease the spasticity that could be contributing to that arm dropping down or pulling forward. So. Now that we have that out of the way, before we get into the exercises, uh, it's a good idea for everyone to just do a, a check to see if it's true shoulder drop or if it's a postural issue. So the way you do that is you just wanna get in front of a mirror and you just want to make sure uh, that your nose is in line with your sternum, which is in line with your belly button, which goes right down the center of your feet if you're standing. If you're sitting, that it's all lined up right in the middle of your knees. That's step one. If you are perfectly lined up and the shoulder is still dropped, you might wanna have someone take a picture of you from the side to see are the shoulders in line from the side or does it look like your upper body's rotated? That will let you know, is this just weakness in the muscles that lift the shoulder up? And we'll get into that in a little bit, kind of what, the, what those exercises are when I get to the exercises. But is it just weakness in the muscles that keep that scapula stabilized? Or is it a combination of maybe you stay rotated towards your strong side a little bit, and that's why the shoulder appears lower? Or is it that you have spasticity in the muscles that pull the shoulder blade forward? And that will also kind of give you an indication of what exercises you want to focus on. So if, again, just to review, if you're lined up from the front, but from the side, it looks like you're rotated a little bit, there's probably some tightness on the front of the shoulder combined with possibly some weakness in the muscles that pull that shoulder blade up and back, those two things. So that'll be important when we get to the exercises. The next thing I want you to do is just raise both your shoulders up in front of the mirror. If you can raise both your shoulders up in front of the mirror, it's probably not the muscles, the weak muscles are not the muscles that elevate the shoulder. And I do see this a lot, like a lot of people, a lot of therapists give shoulder shrug exercises, but if I test someone's shoulder shrug, their shoulder shrug is pretty good. And in that case, I would say it is probably more of the tightness that's pulling that shoulder down and forward. And maybe you don't need to work on like shoulder shrug exercises as much. So just do a quick test. When you raise your shoulders up, do both of them come up together? If so, then the stretching is gonna be something that you're gonna wanna focus on and we'll get to that. Um, but then also possibly just the muscles that pull that shoulder blade 
backwards, and we're gonna get to that as well. Those are retraction exercises. And then the last thing I want you to check is, um, is it worse when you're walking versus sitting? If so, you definitely want to incorporate some of the exercises that we're gonna do where we do incorporate standing. It is very common that people are symmetrical when they're sitting, but if they get up and they try and walk, that it gets worse. So that's just one other thing that you would wanna look at. Try and find the specific scenario in which you have that appearance that that shoulder is lower and try and recreate those scenarios when you're doing some of these exercises. So I hope all of that made sense, but now let's dive into the exercises. So what we're starting out with are just some stretches. So this is for any of you who feel like you do after going through some of that stuff on yourself that I just went through, you have determined that some of the muscles that pull that shoulder down are tight. So you just wanna sit, this is the shoulder we're stretching, and then you just kind of want to drape yourself over something, um, something kind of solid. You can always roll up a, a few beach towels and just put some duct tape around it just to make it a little bit more solid. And then you're literally just hanging and you should feel this stretch all along this side. And then if you can, with your stronger arm, you can pull that arm up and over your head. And you want to hold it for about a minute. So this is just another stretch um, that you want the elbow supported on something and you're just leaning into it. So this is a great stretch for any of you, especially if you know you have some inattention or neglect or you tend to lean on that right armrest on your wheelchair. You wanna try and just shift towards that side as much as possible. Try not to let this arm collapse, which is usually pretty common. So you can take your other arm and just really make sure that that shoulder is lined up directly over the elbow as you lean. And again, some of you will feel this all down your side. And you just wanna hold it one minute. Now, if you're someone who's a little bit higher level and you can support your body weight on this arm, this would be a variation similar to the one that I just showed in sitting. And then if you can, you can even try and extend that arm. If you have a second person, you can have that person support your elbow so that that arm stays straight. And again, you're just trying to feel a really good stretch all the way down your side. And now this is for any of you who, when you tried to do that shoulder shrug, that shoulder didn't move at all. You definitely, obviously that means you have some weakness in the muscles that lift that shoulder up and that's why your shoulder is dropping. So we're just gonna do some shoulder shrugs. I like having some kind of a bar in your hands, um, especially when we get to the standing variation of this, just to help keep your elbows straight. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll use kind of like a spastic pattern to raise that shoulder up. So this just kind of really allows you to isolate that shoulder blade and not allow you to use like a synergy pattern to get that motion. So again, just shoulder shrugs. And then next, as I mentioned, you wanna try and do those shoulder shrugs in standing. If you are someone that notices that it gets worse uh, when you're walking, I would try and change your foot position. Maybe try standing with a little bit of a narrower base and do it that way. Again, trying to simulate as much of walking as you can and still being able to shrug those shoulders up. And then the next one you're gonna do is you're just gonna do these lift offs. So you're gonna try and lift that bar off of your bottom. If you notice that just your strong arm is pulling back or that you're rotating your trunk, um, try and pay attention to keep your body square pointing forward and you're just lifting the bar off of your bottom. Thank you. 
Next, if you have grip strength and you do not have a shoulder subluxation, if you don't know what a shoulder subluxation is, I will put links for those videos in the description below. If you're unsure at all as to whether or not you have a shoulder subluxation, do not do this exercise. Quickly, a shoulder subluxation is when the arm drops out of the socket, and you will usually notice that, or you one way that you know that you have this is if you have like a divot on the top of your shoulder, right, kind of on the side of your shoulder, not top, but kind of side of your shoulder. Again, watch the video below on shoulder subluxation if you are unsure, but if you know you don't have a shoulder subluxation, next year, and you have grip strength, you wanna hold a weight and you're just gonna let that weight fall, bending at your waist. So really make sure that you're bending from here and then you're just gonna try and pull it back. Now when you pull it back, I want you to really focus on really squeezing from your waist. So I don't want just a shoulder shrug, we've already done that exercise, but we're really trying to get the muscles more engaged lower down, which you usually are slightly involved as well. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but you definitely wanna just let it drop and you're just trying to bring it to neutral. Again, if you're someone that notices that it's worse when you're walking, try and change your foot position up a little bit. Try like a stagger stance and do the same thing. Try even with your feet crossed if you can and do the same thing, really trying to isolate that midsection and trying to kind of straighten your body out. So I'll just go back to straight. So for this exercise, this is for those of you who maybe have some neglect and you've had your whole upper body rotated towards your strong side and that is contributing to that shoulder drop. So basically we're just working on all those muscles that help to rotate that body back in the other direction. Again, if it's someone, if you're someone where you notice it's worse when you're walking, try and change your foot position up a little bit, but at the very base level, uh, you can stand with your feet just shoulder width apart, and you're just rotating your shoulders away. To we're rotating your shoulders toward the weak arm. So if you don't have grip strength, hook your fingers together to help hold them out there, or put an elbow immobilizer on to keep the arms straight. But you want those arms away from your body a little bit, and you're just rotating toward the weak arm. And then of course, I did tell you guys that if you're someone where you notice it's worse when you're walking, you definitely wanna make it as specific as possible to walking. I would say in many cases, the more kind of stressed or tensed your body is, the worse that, that shoulder drop will get if you're someone that your shoulder drop is due to a lot of involuntary muscle contractions in that arm pulling that shoulder forward. So you wanna do as many variations with your feet as possible. Um, I like holding the bar behind you because you can get immediate feedback, especially if you do it in front of a mirror. If one side of the bar drops, you'll immediately know that that's dropping, but you want to keep that as level as possible. And then just do like alternating toe taps on a yoga block. The reason I like a yoga block is because you really do have to um, make sure all your weight's on one leg. If it's not, you're gonna tip that yoga block over. So that's why I like something that's kind of lightweight if you're higher level. And again, just back and forth. Again, you wanna make sure that the bar is not twisting and that shoulder's not coming forward, but it's staying level and you're just doing those alternating toe taps. The other thing that I love is just tandem walking, just tandem steps forwards and backwards, trying not to let that shoulder drop. If you can't go heel to toe, you can start with your feet staggered or kind of side by side, but closer and do the same thing. You're just gonna walk forward and walk. I love walking backwards. Don't neglect the backwards stepping. It's a super valuable skill to have to take a step backwards just for um, recovery. If you lose your balance backwards, being able to take a step to prevent yourself from falling is super valuable. So anytime I can incorporate backwards walking, I have a tendency to do that. But again, your goal for this exercise is to make sure that it's not tipping or that the bar is not rotating when you're doing that. 
And then if you're really, I wouldn't say higher level, but if you're kind of on the more advanced side of things, or maybe you're not, this is something that you want to work towards, is getting a barb on your shoulders. Now, most of you aren't going to be able to do this, but it is a good position. The reason I say that is because it stretches all those muscles that are tight. And so in many cases, when I try and put a bar on someone's shoulder and they can't do it, it's indicative that that is the reason why their shoulders dropped. So most people that have a, a, a like kind of like a stiff arm and that arm is just kind of always forward. Um, I can't say why this is true for sure, but I do notice what I'm describing now. I notice it a lot with people that have had a stroke in their thalamus. So I can't really explain it, but you guys have a tendency to just, just have overall more stiffness. I wouldn't even call it like spasticity. Your muscle tone is just a little bit more rigid. And in most cases, that is what I see. Um, actually, what I see is I, I do see like when you walk that there's really little isolation in the components or the body segments on this side as everything just kind of moves together. But you guys are also the ones that, you know, that have had the thalamic stroke that don't really have a history of shoulder subluxation that if you work at it and you can eventually get a bar behind your behind your shoulders it will dramatically uh, improve that shoulder drop or kind of that robot walk so definitely work towards this um, this would be a good goal for you to work towards and then do the same thing marching stepping across stepping across the other way without it dropping or pulling in. Again, probably not gonna be able to do this if you haven't been working on it from day one, but it is definitely within your reach. So keep working towards it. I have lots of shoulder stretches, videos on shoulder stretching on this channel. Go through those videos again where I um, give a ton of stretches that you can do to start working towards this position. But then that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, if you are someone that has like a shoulder drop, put it in the comments below, as well as do the little assessment that I went through in this video and maybe put what you think is causing your shoulder to drop in the description or in the comments below, because definitely it's just good for me to know kind of where everyone's at first, where everyone's at in the recovery process, um, how digestible was this information like did that explanation of how to do these little self-assessments on yourself did they resonate with you or were you able to do it it just gives me a lot of information I just love it because you guys start to interact with each other and you start to help each other out as well so definitely comment below what's going on with your shoulder and if this video helped. If you're new to this channel and you like this sort of content and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good day.